you know. Hey, welcome back to TED. It's great to have you here. Thanks for having me. So, in the next half hour or so, um, we're going to spend some time exploring your vision for what an exciting future might look like, which I guess makes the first question uh, a little ironic. Why are you boring? Yeah, <clears throat> I ask myself that frequently. Um, the, uh, we're, we're trying to dig a hole、um, under LA, and this is to create the beginning of what will hopefully be a 3D network of tunnels to alleviate congestion. So, I mean, right now, I think one of the most、uh, soul-destroying things is traffic.、Um, it affects people in every part of the world. Uh, it, it takes away so much of your, your life, and your, this, this, it's, it's horrible. It's particularly horrible in LA.、Um, <laughs> and and I, so, think, I think you've, you've brought、uh, with you the first visualization that's been shown of this. Can, we,、yeah. can I show this? Yeah, absolutely. So this is the first time. Yeah, we're, we're, just to sort of show what we're talking about. So that there are a couple of key things that are important in having、um, a 3D tunnel network. First of all, you have to be able to integrate the entrance and exit of the tunnel seamlessly into the fabric of a city. So, by having a, an, an elevator, sort of a, a, sort of a, a car skate that's on, on an,、uh, an elevator, you can integrate the entrance and exits、uh, to the tunnel network、oh、just、my. by using two parking spaces.、Um, and then the car gets on a skate. There's no speed limit here. So,、uh, we're designing this to be. Uh, able to operate at 200 kilometers an hour, about 130, 200 kilometers an hour, or about 130 miles per hour.、Uh, so you should be able to get from, say,、uh, Westwood to LAX in six minutes, five six minutes. <laughs> <laughs>、um, so possibly initially done as like a, on, a, on a sort of toll road type basis. Yeah. Which I guess alleviates some traffic from the surface streets as well. So, I think I don't know if people noticed it in the video, but th- there's no real limit to how many levels of, tr- of tunnel you can have.、So、you can go much further deep than you can go up. The deepest mines are much deeper than the tallest buildings are tall. So you can alleviate any arbitrary level of urban congestion、uh, with with a 3D tunnel network. This is a very important point. So a key rebuttal to the t- tunnels is that. If you add、uh, one layer of tunnels, then that will simply alleviate congestion. It'll get used up, and, and and then you'll be back where you started, back with congestion. But you can go to any arbitrary number of tunnels, any number of levels. But people seem traditionally it's, it's incredibly expensive to dig, and that would block this idea. Yeah.、Um, well, they're, they're right. To give you an example, the LA subway extension,、uh, which is a, I think it's a two and a half mile extension. That was just completed for two billion dollars. So it's roughly a billion dollars a mile to do the the subway extension in in LA, and, and this is not the highest utility subway in the world.、Um, so, it, yeah, it's quite difficult to dig tunnels normally. I think we need to have at least a tenfold improvement in the cost per mile of tunneling. And how could you achieve that? I guess、uh, actually, if if you just do two things, you can get to Approximately an order of magnitude improvement,、uh, and, and I think you can go beyond that. So the the first thing to do is to cut the tunnel, tunnel diameter、uh, by a factor of two or more. So to, so a single road lane tunnel would,、uh, the, uh, according to regulations, has to be 26 feet, maybe 28 feet in diameter, to allow for crashes and emergency vehicles,、um, and sufficient ventilation、uh, for、uh, combustion engine cars. But if you if you shrink that diameter to What, what we're attempting, which is 12 feet, which is plenty to get an electric skate through,、uh, you drop the、uh, the diameter by a factor of two and the cross-sectional area by by a factor of four. So,、uh, and the, the tunneling cost scales with the cross-sectional area. So that's roughly a half order of magnitude improvement right there. Then tunneling machines、uh, currently tunnel for half the time, then they stop, and then the, the rest of the time is putting in reinforcements for the tunnel wall. So if you have, if you design the machine instead to do continuous tunneling and reinforcing, that'll give you a factor of two improvement. Combine that, and it's a factor of eight.、Uh, also, these machines are far from at being at their their power or thermal limit. So you can jack up the power to the machine substantially. I think you can get at least a factor of two, maybe a, a factor of 
four or five improvements on, the, on top of that. So I, I think the, it, there's a, a fairly straightforward series of steps to get uh, somewhere in excess of an order of magnitude improvement in the cost per mile. Um, and um, our, our target actually is we've got a pet snail called Gary. Um, this is from Gary the snail from South Park. <laughs> I mean, sorry, um, SpongeBob, SpongeBob SquarePants. Um, <laughs> so, so Gary uh, is, is capable uh, of, of currently, he's capable of going 14 times faster than, than, than a tunnel boring machine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You, you so want to beat Gary? We want to beat Gary. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's not a patient little fellow, and we want the, to, that will be victory. Victory is beating the snail. <laughs> but uh, a lot of people imagining, dreaming about future cities, they imagine that the, actually the solution is, is um, sort of flying cars, drones, etc. You, you, you go above ground. Um, why isn't that a better solution? You save all that tunneling cost. Right. I, I'm in favor of flying things. Obviously, I do rockets, so I, I like things that fly. This is not some inherent bias against flying things, but th th there is a challenge with flying cars in that they, they'll be quite noisy, uh, the, the wind force generated will be very high. Uh, they, th there's, um, let's just say that if something's flying over your head, if there are a whole bunch of flying cars going all over the place, um, that is not an, exi an, an anxiety-reducing uh, <laughs> situation. Um, you don't think to yourself, well, I feel better about today. Um, <laughs> you're thinking, like, did they service their hubcap? Or is it going <laughs> to come off and guillotine me as they're flying past? Um, and so, so, you're, so you've got this vision, then, future cities with these, these rich 3D networks of, of tunnels, Underneath, is there a tie-in here with with Hyperloop? Could you apply these tunnels to use for this Hyperloop idea you had, you released a few years ago? Yeah. So, um, you know, we've been sort of puttering around with the Hyperloop stuff for um, for a while. We, we built a Hyperloop test track adjacent to SpaceX just for a student competition uh, to encourage innovative ideas in transport. Um, it, it actually ends up being the uh, the, the biggest. Um, vacuum chamber in the world after the Large Hadron Collider uh, by, by volume. So, um, so, so it, it, was, it was sort of quite, quite fun to do that, um, but it was kind of a hobby thing. And, and then um, we, we think we might, so we developed a little pusher car to push the, 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 the student pods, um, but we're going to try seeing how fast we can make the, the pusher go if it's not pushing something. Huh. So. We, I mean, like, sort of cautiously optimistic, we'll be able to be faster than, a, uh, than, the, than the world's fastest bullet train, even in, in a 0.8 mile stretch. Whoa. Um, Good break. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. It's either going <laughs> to smash into tiny pieces or. But you can, you can, picture, you can picture then a Hyperloop in a tunnel g yes. running quite, quite long distances. Exactly. So, so in, in looking at tunneling technology, it turns out that in order to make a tunnel, you have to, uh, ha in order to seal against the water table, uh, you've got to typically design a tunnel wall to be uh, a good to about five or six atmospheres. Um, so to go to vacuum is only one atmosphere, hmm. or near vacuum. So uh, actually, it, it sort of turns out that automatically, if you build a tunnel that is good enough to resist the water table, it is automatically capable of holding vacuum. Huh. So, yeah. And so, so you can actually picture this, like, well, like what, what kind of length tunnel do you, is, is in Elon's future to running Hyperloop? Yeah, I, th I think there's no, there's no real length limit. Uh, you, could, you, could, you could dig as much as you want. Um, I, I think the, like, if you were to do something like um, a DC to New York uh, Hyperloop, I think you'd probably want to go underground the entire way because it's a high-density area. It does, you're going... You're going um, under a lot of buildings and houses, and if you go deep enough, you cannot detect the tunnel. Um, this is, sometimes people think, well, it's going to be pretty annoying to have a tunnel dug under my house. Like, if that tunnel is dug more than about three or four tunnel diameters beneath your house, you will not be able to detect it being dug at all. Um, in, fa in fact, like the, um, if, you, if you're able to detect the tunnel being, being dug, you, 
whatever device you're using, you can get a lot of money for that device from the Israeli military, who is trying to detect tunnels from Hamas, um, <laughs> and uh, from the U.S. Uh, Customs and Border Patrol, they're trying to detect drug tunnels. So, uh, if you, the, the reality is that uh, Earth is incredibly good at absorbing vibrations, and once the tunnel depth is below a certain level, it is undetectable. It, maybe if you have a very sensitive seismic instrument, you might be able to detect it. So you've started a new company to do this called the Boring Company. Very nice, very very funny. Um, but how, <laughs> What's funny how, about that? <laughs> how how um, um, how much of your time is this? It's it's um, it's maybe two or three percent. You've you've bought it a hobby. This is this is what an Elon Musk hobby looks like. <laughs> I mean, it really is. Like we actually. You know, this is basically interns and people doing it part time. So this is um, like we bought, like we bought, you know, um, some secondhand machinery, and it's just it's kind of puttering along, but it's making good progress. So, so an even yeah. bigger part of your time is being spent on on um, electrifying cars and transport through Tesla. Um, is is one of the motivations for the for the tunneling project the realization that actually. In a world where cars are electric and where they're, and where they're self-driving, there may end up being more cars on the roads on any given hour yeah. than there are now. Yeah, the, the, exactly. The <clears throat> a, a lot of people think that once, when you make cars autonomous, that they'll be able to go faster and that will alleviate congestion. Um, and to some degree, that will be true. Uh, but once you have shared autonomy, where It's much cheaper to go by car, and you can go point to point.、Um, the affordability of of going in a car will be will be better than that of a bus. Like it will cost less than a bus ticket. So、um, the amount of driving that'll occur will be much greater with shared autonomy, and actually traffic will get far worse. I mean, you, you started Tesla with the, with the goal of of persuading the world to that electrification was the future of cars.、Yeah. And a few years ago, people were laughing at you. Now, But, not so much. I mean, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, isn't I it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe some. But isn't it true that <laughs> isn't it true that pretty much every auto manufacturer has announced serious electrification plans for the m- short to medium term future?、Uh, yeah, yeah. The、um, the I, I think almost every automaker has has some electric vehicle program. They vary in seriousness. Some some are very serious about transitioning entirely to electric,、um, and some are just dabbling in it.、Um, and some, amazingly, are still pursuing fuel cells. But I think that won't last much longer. But isn't isn't there isn't there a sense though, Elon, where you 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 could now just declare victory and say, you know, we did it. Let 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 the world electrify, and you go on and focus on other stuff. Yeah.、Um, <laughs> well, I intend to stay with Tesla as as far into the future as I can imagine,、um, and、uh, there are a lot of exciting things that w- we have coming.、Uh, we've got、um, obviously the Model Three that's coming soon.、Uh, we'll be unveiling the、uh, Tesla semi truck.、Um, and okay, maybe... well, we're going to we're going to come、yeah. to this. So,、okay. so, so Model Three. So it's coming. It's supposed to be coming in July, ish. Yeah, it, it's looking quite good for starting production in July. Yeah. Wow.、Well, Um, one of the things that people are so excited about is is the fact that it, it's、um, it's got autopilot, and、um, you you put out this video a while back showing what that、um, what that technology looked、sure. like or would look like. Yeah.、Um, there's obviously autopilot in Model S right now. Yeah. What, what are we seeing here? Yeah. So this is、um, using only cameras and a GPS. So there's no lidar or radar being used here. This is just using passive optical, which is essentially what a person uses.、Um, the, the whole road system is meant to be navigated with、uh, passive optical or, or cameras. And so, once you solve cameras、uh, or vision,、uh, then autonomy is solved. If you don't solve vision, it's not solved. So that, that's why our focus is so heavily on having a, a vision neural net that's. Very effective for road conditions, right? Many other people are going the lidar route. You, you want cameras plus radar is is most of it. You can absolutely be superhuman with just cameras.、Hmm. Like you could probably do ten times better than humans with just just cameras.
So, so the new cars being sold right now have have uh, eight eight cameras in them. That, yeah. That they they can't yet do what that showed. Um, when will they be able to? Um, I think the we're still on track for being able to go um, cross country from LA to New York by the end of the year, fully autonomous. Um, and okay. So so, so, so a car, by the end of the year, you're saying yeah. that someone's going to sit in a Tesla. Without touching the steering wheel, tap in New York,、mm -hmm. off it goes. Yeah, won't have to ever touch the wheel by the end of 2017. Yeah, essentially, November or December of this year, we should be able to go from yeah, from, all the way from a parking lot in California to a parking lot in New York, no controls touched at any point during the entire journey. And <laughs> amazing. Part of that is possible because you've already got a fleet of Teslas driving all these roads. You're you're、yeah. you're accumulating a huge amount of data、mm -hmm. of that national <clears throat> road system. Yes, but the thing that will be interesting is that I, I I'm I'm actually fairly confident it will be able to do that route,、um, even if you change the route dynamically.、Hmm. So, like it's. It's fairly easy. If you say I'm going to be really good at one specific route, that's one thing. But I,、um, it should be able to go, really be very good. Certainly, once you enter a highway, to go anywhere on the highway system, in a, in a given country.、Um, it's, so it's not it's not sort of limited to LA, New York. We could we could change it, and make it Seattle, Florida,、hmm. that that day, or you know, in real time. So you were going from. L.A. to New York. Now go from、uh, L.A. to Toronto. So, so leaving aside regulation for a second, the, in terms of the technology alone,、um, the, the time when someone will be able to buy one of your cars and literally just take their hands off the wheel and go to sleep and wake up and find that they've arrived—how far away is that to do that? I、safely? think that's about that's about two years. The, the, so the, the real trick of it is not you know how do you make it work? Say ninety nine. Point nine percent of the time, because like, like, if if a car crashes, say one in a thousand times, then it, you're probably still not going to be comfortable falling asleep.、Um, that, that's, you know, you shouldn't be certainly. <laughs>、um, so, so, but it's but it's, by the same token, it's not going to be. It's never going to be perfect. No system is going to be perfect. But if you say it's perhaps,、um, it's it, it the, the car is unlikely to crash. In a hundred lifetimes or a thousand lifetimes, then people are like, okay, wow. If I would live a thousand lives, I would still most likely never experience a crash. Then that's probably okay to sleep. Maybe, I guess a big concern of yours is that people may actually get seduced too early to think that this is safe, and,、yeah. and that you'll have some horrible incident happen that puts things puts things back. Well, I think that the autonomy system is likely to at least mitigate the、uh, the, the crash. Um, except in rare circumstances, and, uh, the, the thing to appreciate about、uh, vehicle safety is this is this is probabilistic.、Right. So that there is, I mean, there's some chance that any time a human driver gets in the car, that they will have an accident. That is their fault.、Hmm. Um, it's it's never zero.、Um, and so, so the, the really, it's the, the key threshold for autonomy is how much better does autonomy need to be. Uh, than a person before you can rely on it. But once you get that hand, literally safe hands-off driving, the, the, the power to disrupt the whole industry seems massive. Because at that point, you've spoken of people being able to buy a car, drops you off、yeah. at work, and then you let it go and and、uh, provide a sort of Uber-like service to other people, earn you money,、right. maybe even cover the cost of your lease of that car. Exactly. So you can kind of get a car for free. Is that is that really likely? Yeah, I, I, absolutely. This is what will happen. So there will be a shared autonomy fleet where you buy your car, and you can choose to use that car exclusively.、Um, you could choose to、um, have it be used only by friends and family, only by、uh, five star、uh, other drivers who are rated five star. You can choose to、uh, share it sometimes, but not other times.、Um, that's 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 one hundred percent what will occur. It's just a question of when. Wow. So.、Um You mentioned the semi, and I think you're planning to announce this、yeah. in September. But、um, I'm curious whether there's anything you could show us today. I will show you a teaser shot of the、uh, of, of the truck. Teaser shot. <laughs> <laughs> It's live. <laughs> okay.
No, yeah, no that's we, definitely we, a case where we want to be cautious about the autonomy features. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because that, that <laughs> just we can't see that much of it, but it, it doesn't look like just a little friendly neighborhood truck. It looks kind of badass. How? How? What sort of? What sort of semi is this? So this is a a heavy-duty, long-range semi truck. So it's like the uh, highest uh, weight capability um, and and with long range. Um, so so essentially, it's meant to um, alleviate the the, the heavy-duty trucking loads. Um, right. And this is something which uh, people do not today think is possible. To think the truck doesn't have enough power or it doesn't have enough range. Um, and then with the with the Tesla semi. We want to show that you no, know, an electric truck actually can out torque uh, any diesel uh, semi, um, and you know, put, if, if you had a tug of war competition, uh, the, like the Tesla semi will will tug the the diesel semi uphill. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that's that's pretty cool. And short term, these aren't driverless. These are they, these are going to be trucks that truck drivers want to drive. Yes. Uh, no, so uh, what will be really fun about this is you, you don't have you have a, a flat torque RPM curve with an electric motor, uh, whereas with a diesel motor or any kind of internal combustion engine car, you've got um, a torque RPM curve that looks like a hill. Um, so, so this will be a very spry truck. Um, you, you could drive this around like a sports car. There's no gears. It's like single speed. So. There's, there's a great movie to be made here somewhere. I don't know what it is, and I don't know okay. that it ends well. But it's, I mean, it's a great quite, movie. I mean, uh, it's quite bizarre test driving the, 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 the you know, when, when, I'm, when I was driving the, uh, the, the test prototype for, the, for this truck. It's really weird because you're driving around and you're just you're so nimble, and you're in this giant truck. Wait, wait, you, you've you've already driven a, yeah, yeah. a pr prototype. That... I drove it around the parking lot. I was like, this is crazy. Wow. This is not vaporware. <laughs> this is like, like wow. you're just driving this giant truck and sort of making these mad maneuvers. This is cool. Okay, from from a really badass picture to a kind of less badass picture. Um, this is just a cute house yeah. from Desperate Housewives or something. What what, the, <laughs> yeah. what what on earth is going on here? Well, this illustrates the picture of the future that I think it, um, is how how things will evolve. You've got an electric car in the driveway. Um, if you look in between the electric car and the house. Uh, there are actually three power walls uh, stacked up against the side of the house, and then that that house roof is is a solar roof. So that's, a, that's an actual solar glass roof. Okay, so those. That, that's a picture like of a real. That's a, well, it, admittedly, it's a it's a real fake house. That that's a real fake house. <laughs> <laughs> so so these these roof tiles, uh, so, some of them have in them yeah. um, basically so, solar power, the ability to. Yeah. The, so the, the solar glass tiles where you can you. Um, you can adjust the texture and the color uh, at a very fine-grained level, um, and then uh, th there's sort of micro louvers uh, in, uh, in, in the glass, such that um, when you're looking at the roof from street level or close to street level, all the tiles look w w the tiles look the same whether there is a solar panel behind it or a, so a solar cell behind it or not. Um, so you, you have an even um, Even color from from um, the ground level. If you were to look at it from a helicopter, you you would be actually able to look through and see that some of the the glass tiles have uh, a solar cell behind them and some do not. Right. You, you put them in. You put them in the ones level. that are likely to see a, a lot of sun. Yes. And that, that makes these roofs super affordable, right? They're not not that much more expensive than than just tiling the roof. Yeah. The the the, the, the we're very confident that the cost of the roof. Uh, Uh, plus the cost of electricity, uh, that, this, that, that a solar glass roof will be less than the cost of a normal roof plus the, the cost of electricity. So in other words, um, this will be uh, economically a no-brainer. Um, it will look, we think it will look great, um, and it will last. I mean, we, we thought about like having the, the, the warranty be infinity, um, but then people thought, well, that might sound like we were just talking rubbish. But, but actually, <laughs> the, the like the. This is like t this is tough and glass. Like well after the house has collapsed, um, and there's nothing there, the roof will tie the glass tiles will still be there. Okay, so, so I think you're rolling. So, this is cool. You're, so you're rolling this out in a couple, couple of weeks' time, I think, with four, like four different roofing types. Yeah, we're starting off with two, um, two initially, and then the second two will be introduced uh, early next year.
And what's the scale of ambition here? How, how, how many houses do you believe could end up having this, this type of roofing? I mean, I think eventually, um, I think eventually, almost all houses will have a solar roof. Um, now, now the, the, the thing is to consider the time scale here to be probably on the order of 40 or 50 years. So, on, on average, a roof is replaced every 20 to 25 years. So, um, but you don't you don't start replacing all roofs immediately. Uh, but eventually, if you say we were to fast forward to say 15 years from now, it will be unusual. To have a roof that does not have solar. Is, is there a mental model thing that people don't get here? That that um, that there's there's been because of the shift in the sort of cost of economics of solar power that like most houses actually have enough sunlight on their roof pretty much to power all of their needs. If you could capture the power, you, yeah. it could pretty much power all their needs, right? You could be, you could go off grid, kind of. Yeah, it depends on 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 where you are and what the house size is relative to the roof area. But yeah, it's fair. It's a fair statement to say that most houses. Uh, in the U.S., have enough roof area to power all the needs of the house. Okay, so so the the key to the economics of of uh, the cars, the semi, of these houses is is the the falling price of lithium-ion batteries, which you've made a huge bet on as 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 Tesla. In many yeah. ways, that's almost the core competency. And and um, you you've decided that to really like um, own that. Competency. You, you just have to build the world's largest manufacturing plant, kind of double the world's supply of lithium-ion batteries. Yeah. Is with 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 this guy. What is this? Yeah. So that's that's the Gigafactory. Um, the, the progress so far in the Gigafactory. Uh, eventually, you can sort of roughly see that there's it's a, there's sort of a diamond shape overall. And when it's fully done, it'll be it'll look like a giant diamond. Well, that's the idea behind it. And it's aligned on True North. There's a small Detail, but and, um, and capable of producing like a hundred, eventually like a hundred gigawatt hours of, of yeah. uh, batteries a year. Hundred gigawatt hours. We think probably more, but yeah. And they're actually being produced right now already here, right? They're in production there's a, already. There's, you guys put out this video. Yeah. I mean, is that speeded up or? That's the that's the slowed down version. So, how, yeah. how fast does it actually go? Well, um, when it's running at full speed. Um, you can't actually see the cells without a strobe light. <laughs> It's just blur. <laughs> and how, I mean, one of your one of your core ideas, Elon, about about what makes an exciting future is a future where we no longer feel guilty about energy. Um, how help us picture this? I mean, how many gigafactories, if you like, does it take to to get us there? Uh, it's about a hundred, roughly. It's not ten. It's not a thousand. Most likely a hundred. See, I, I, I kind of yeah. find this amazing. Like, you can actually picture, if, if that's right, you can picture what it would take to move the world off this vast yeah. fossil fuel thing. It's like you're building one, cost five billion dollars. Maybe the next one, or whatever, five to ten billion dollars. Yeah. Like, it's it's kind of cool that you can picture that that project. And you're planning to do uh, a Tesla, or at least another two, announce another two this year. I think I will we'll announce locations for. Somewhere between two and four gigafactories later this year. Yeah, probably four. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. I can't. I can't tease. Te no more teasing from you for here. Like, where continent? <laughs> <laughs> um, you can say no. I, I, we need to address a global market. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, <laughs> this is cool. Um, <laughs> I think we should talk for actually global market. So I'm. I have to ask you one question. I'm going to ask you one question about politics. Only one. I'm kind of sick of politics, uh, but I didn't need to ask you this. Um, you're you're um, on um, a body now giving advice to a guy who, who? has said he <laughs> doesn't really believe in climate change. And um, there's there's a lot of people out there who kind of think you shouldn't be doing that. They, they'd like you to walk away from that. What would you say to them? Uh, well, I think that th there's. Eric, first of all, I'm just on two advisory councils where the format consists of going around the room and asking people's opinion on things. Um, and so there's like a meeting every month or two. Uh, 
you know, that's the sum total of, 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 of my contribution. But I think to the degree that there are people in the room who are arguing in favor of doing something about climate change um, or, you know, other, you know, certain, you know so social issues, um, uh, you know, I mean, I've used the, the, the meetings I've had thus far to argue in favor of immigration and in favor of climate change. Um, and if, um, if I hadn't done that, there wouldn't, that wasn't on the agenda before. So maybe nothing will happen, but at least the words were said. Okay. Um, so let, let's, let's talk SpaceX and Mars. Uh, last time you were here, you, you spoke about this, um, what seemed like a kind of incredibly ambitious dream to uh, develop rockets that were actually reusable. Uh, and you've only gone and done it. Yeah. I mean, talk us, Finally, talk yeah. us through this. What, what, what are we time. looking at here? Yeah, so this is uh, one of our rocket boosters coming back uh, from very, very, high, very high and fast in space. So it just delivered the, the upper stage at, at high velocity. I think this may have been sort of a Mach 7 or so delivery of the, of the upper stage. Um, yeah. <laughs> So that was, that, was, that was a sped up. That's the slowed down version, yeah. That, <laughs> that was that. Uh, that was the sped up version. But I mean, that's, that's, that's amazing. You, and several of these failed before you finally figured out yeah. how, how to, how to get, get to do it. But now you've landed, you've done this, what, five or six times? I think we're eight, eight or nine eight, or something. Eight, yeah. yeah. And uh, for the first time, you've actually reflown one of the yeah. rockets that landed. So, so, so we landed, yeah, we landed the rocket booster um, and then prepped it for flight again and flew it, flew it again. So it's the, it's the first reflight of, uh, of, of an orbital, orbital booster where, where that reflight is relevant. So it's important to, to appreciate that reusability is only relevant if it is rapid, um, rapid and complete. Right. Uh, so like an aircraft or a car, uh, the, the reusability is rapid and complete. Uh, you do not send your aircraft into to, to Boeing in between flights. Right. Um, so, so this is allowing you to dream of this, this really ambitious idea of, of sending uh, many, many, many people to Mars yeah. in what, in 10 or 20 years, 20 years time, I guess, yeah. in the next 20 years. And you've designed this outrageous uh, rocket to do it. Ch give, help us understand the scale of this thing. Well, I think visually you can see that um, person. Yeah, and that's the vehicle. So if that, if that was a skyscraper, that's like a 40, did I read that, 40 stories? Yeah, a little, maybe a little more, yeah. The, yeah, the, the, the thrust level of this is really, um, um, this configuration is about four times the thrust of, a, of the Saturn V moon rocket. Um, four times the thrust of the biggest rocket humanity ever created before. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, uh, um, I mean, in... As one does. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, in, in units of 747, like 747 is only about a quarter, a quarter million pounds of thrust. So that that's so there are f um, for every 10 million pounds of thrust, there's 47, 47. So this this would be the thrust equivalent of 100, 120 747s, with all engines blazing. And so even even with a machine designed to escape Earth's gravity, I think you told me last last this thing could actually take. A fully loaded 747, people, cargo, everything, into yeah. into into orbit. Exactly. This this can take <laughs> a fully loaded 747 with with maximum fuel, maximum passengers, um, maximum cargo on the 747. This can take it as cargo. <laughs> so 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 based on this, you you uh, presented um, recently this interplanetary transport system, which. Um, um, is visualized this way, and this is a yeah. scene you picture, what, in, in I mean, 30 years' time, 20 years' time? I, people walking into this, this rocket. I mean, I'm hopeful it's sort of in the eight, eight, year, eight to ten year time frame. Aspirationally, that's our target. Our internal targets are more aggressive, but I think... Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So well, this, this vehicle this thing's... seems quite large, and is large by comparison with other rockets. I think. Um, the, the, the future spacecraft will, be, will make this look like a rowboat. I mean, this is, the, the, the future spaceships will be truly enormous. Um, but why, why, Elon? Because like, why do we need to build a city 
on Mars with a million people on it in your lifetime, which I, th I think is kind of what you've said you'd love to do. Yeah, I think it's important to have um, a future that is inspiring and appealing. I mean, I, I just think that there, like, there have to be reasons that you get up in the morning and you want to live. Like, why do you want to live? What, what's the point? What, what inspires you? What, what do you love about the future? And if, if we're not out there, if the future does not include being out there among the stars uh, and being a multi-planet species, I find that, in, that it's incredibly depressing if that's not the future that we're going to have. Um, people, people want to position this as an either-or, that, that um, there, are so, there are so many desperate things happening on the planet now, from climate to poverty to, you know, you pick, you pick your issue. Um, and and, and this, this, this feels like a distraction. You're, you're, you shouldn't be thinking about this. You should be solving what's, what's here and now. And to be fair, you've, you've done a fair old bit to actually do that with, with your you know, work, work on sustainable energy. But wh why not just do that? Well, I, I think there's... I, think I look at the future from a standpoint of, of the probabilities. It's like, it's like a branching stream of probabilities. And there are actions that we can take that affect those probabilities, um, or that accelerate one thing or slow down another thing, or make, you know, introduce something new to the probability stream. Um, sustainable energy will happen no matter what. If there was no Tesla, if Tesla never, never existed, it, it would have to happen out of necessity. It's tautological. Um, if, if, you, until you, if you don't have sustainable energy, it means you have unsustainable energy. Eventually, you'll run out, um, and the, the, the uh, laws of economics will drive, uh, will drive civilization towards sustainable energy, inevitably. The, 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 the fundamental value of a company like Tesla is the degree to which it, it accelerates the advent of sustainable energy uh, faster than it would otherwise occur. Hmm. Um, so when I think, like, what is the fundamental good of a company like Tesla, um, I would say, hopefully, it does, if, if, it, if it accelerated that by a decade, potentially more than a decade, that would be quite a good thing to occur. That's what I consider to be the, 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 the fundamental sort of aspirational good of, of Tesla. Um, then there's becoming a multi planet species in space faring civilization. This is not inevitable. It's very important to appreciate this is not inevitable. The sustainable energy future, I think, is largely inevitable, uh, but being space frame civilization is definitely not inevitable. If you look at, the, uh, at the, the progress in space, in 1969, we were able to send somebody to the moon. 1969. Mm. Um, then we had the, the space shuttle. The, the space shuttle could only take people to low Earth orbit. Mm. Then the space shuttle retired, and the United States could take no one to orbit. So that's the trend. The trend is like down to nothing. This is not... People are mistaken when they think that technology just automatically improves. It does not automatically improve. It only improves if a lot of people work very hard to make it better. And actually, it will, I think, by itself degrade, actually. Mm -hmm. You look at great civilizations like ancient Egypt, and they're able to make the pyramids and they forgot how to do that. Hmm. And, and the Romans, they built these incredible aqueducts. They forgot how to do it. You know, and it's, it almost seems, you know, listening to you and look at the different things you've done, that you've got this, this unique double motivation on everything that I, I find so interesting. Um, we, we, you know, which is, what, one is this um, desire to work for humanity's long-term good. The other is this desire to do something exciting, and it's, it's often, it feels like you, you feel like you need the one to drive the other. With, with Tesla, you want to have sustainable energy, so you make these super ex sexy, exciting cars to do it. You know, solar energy, we need to get there, so we need to make these beautiful roofs. We haven't even spoken about your newest thing, which we don't even have time to do, but you want to save humanity from bad AI, and so you're going to create this really cool brain-machine interface to give us all infinite memory and telepathy and so forth. Um, and on, on, on Mars, it feels like what you're saying is, yeah, we need, we need to save hu humanity and have a, have a backup plan, but also we need to inspire humanity. And, and, yeah. and, 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 and this, is, this is a way to inspire. I think, I think the, 
the, the value of beauty and inspiration is, is very much underrated, no question. Um, but I want to be clear, I, like, I'm not trying to be anyone's savior. Uh, that is not the... I, I'm just trying to think about the future and not be sad. Beautiful statement. I think everyone here would agree that it is not... None of this is going to happen inevitably. The fact that in your mind you dream this stuff, you dream stuff that no one else would, would dare dream, or, or no one else would be capable <laughs> of dreaming at the level of complexity um, yeah. that you do. The fact that you do that, Elon Musk, is a really remarkable thing. Thank you for helping us all to dream a bit yeah. bigger. But you'll tell me if it ever starts getting genuinely insane, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Thank you. That was, that was really, really fantastic. That was really fantastic. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.